Welcome to Inspiring Leaders, the podcast that shares ideas, perspectives, and best practices from great leaders around the world to help you become a more inspired leader. Hey, welcome back to the Inspiring Leaders Podcast. I'm your host and executive coach, Terry Lepofsky. And again, it's great to be with you here on the podcast. Today, I'm pretty excited to announce to you a new series of shows that we're going to be bringing you in the coming weeks and months. And we're calling this Leader Tips, where we focus on different aspects of leadership to help our listeners become more inspired leaders. And today we're kicking it off with our first show in this new series, talking about how to aim well with cognitive intelligence. So here's a question for you. Have you ever worked in an organization where there's been a huge change initiative, something really disruptive, something that required everyone, including you, to learn something or change something, or do something that you didn't know how to do, I know I have. Now, have you ever been part of an organizational change that seriously derailed, or maybe it wasn't thought through, or maybe it wasn't thought through for the right reasons? Well, that's what we want to focus on today. This happens way too often, and it's why we want to dig into this topic of aiming well with something that very few leaders have even heard of. We call it cognitive intelligence. Meet Martin Screlly. Perhaps nobody has had more time to think about aiming well and doing things for the right reasons than this guy right here, the overly ambitious CEO of Turing Pharmaceuticals. It was back about six years ago, September 2015, Martin Scarelli's company obtained the manufacturing license for the life-saving drug um, that's an antiparasitic drug. Martin was, was, was he concerned about helping people who were suffering and needed this antiparasitic drug? No, not at all. He was concerned about profits and that was all he was concerned about. He promptly raised the price of the drug, get this, from $13.50 a pill to 750 bucks per pill putting all of these people who needed this drug pretty much firmly out of reach. Well, the outcry from around the world was pretty deafening. Even the jerks on Wall Street stood back and said, wow, this is a serious jerk. (laughs) In 2017, Screlly was convicted of securities fraud and sentenced to seven years in jail and fined over seven million bucks for a crime that wasn't even related to this repricing of drugs and all of the controversy around this uh, around this drug. Now, for a rich guy like Martin, seven million bucks may be a drop in the bucket. Maybe he can afford it, no problem. But I bet I know what hurt him even more. The damage that this unethical greed did to his reputation. This is something that he's going to have to face a lot longer than seven years. So even if his ego won't allow him to admit it now, I guarantee that his regret will set in deeply and relentlessly at some point in time. Now, let's contrast this with another CEO. Meet Dan Price. Dan's the CEO of a Seattle-based company called Gravity Payments. And way back 10 years ago, 2011, Dan noticed that one of his frontline employees appeared to have low morale. So Dan asked him, hey, what's bothering you? Well, he got a response he didn't expect. His employee replied, you're ripping me off. 
Well, Dan was shocked, but he soon realized that even though his staff wages were consistent with the rest of the market, Dan was actually guilty of trying to keep his wages low so that he could be competitive. He thought that he needed to do this in order to survive. But Dan really got to thinking about this, and he used some cognitive intelligence. A few months later, Dan announced that he was implementing a new minimum wage of $70,000 a year. And he himself would cut his own pay from $1.1 million down to that $70,000 a year mark, partly to fund this new policy. The media went wild with the story, and the hashtag I'm with Dan started all over the place. In interviews, Dan said that he wanted to do something meaningful. After that, Gravity Payments was flooded with new resumes. People wanted to be part of this, but there was also a lot of criticism. The famous talk show host Rush Limbaugh predicted that the company was going to fail, and Dan's own brother and business partner sued him. But Dan stuck to his guns. He believed in what he was doing, and he doubled down by mortgaging his home and cashing in in on his investments. He injected his own money back into gravity payments, his money where his mouth was. Now, using lessons that he learned from his own father, he built gravity payments into a values-based business. And then something happened that nobody expected. Productivity jumped by 40%. In 2012, Dan upped the ante by issuing another 20% raise. And again, Profits rose by the same amount. Since then, the company's customer retention rate has climbed to an enviable 95%. Revenues are growing at twice their previous rate and profits have doubled. What's the lesson here? Martin Screlly did things for the wrong reasons. But by contrast, and despite the pressure and the criticism, Dan Price did things for the right reasons. Dan aimed well and used cognitive intelligence. So yes, today we are exploring cognitive intelligence, or more simply put, conation. Not cognition. A lot of people make this mistake. Cognition is the mental process of gaining knowledge and comprehension. No, no, we are here to talk about conation, which comes before cognition before planning, and before action. So it's interesting to note that conation is one of the least used words in the English language. But it's undoubtedly one of the most important aspects of leadership at every single level of leadership, from entrepreneur to S&P 100 executive to world leaders. This is true all over the world. Everywhere and everything that a leader does, it in, including the decision to be a leader, should really be preceded with conation. So what is conation exactly? Well, it's the desire, the motivation, the aspiration, and the intentions that should precede every decision that we make and every action that we take. Conation is a reflection and deep thinking that leads to effective and efficient actions and accomplishes goals in sustainably healthy ways. So, by extension, cognitive intelligence is the inner reflection that a leader should be engaged in to determine why a matter is worth pursuing how to approach decision-making, and what outcomes will truly make a bigger difference in the bigger picture and over the longer run. Unfortunately, too few people, and in particular too few leaders, actively employ cognitive intelligence. Here's how things normally go off the rails. 
let's say somebody gets promoted for doing a great job. They get great results on the front line. So somebody says, you know what? You deserve to be a manager. They give them the manager's hat and now they've got a team. But nobody helps them think clearly about how they should lead, what kind of leader they want to be, and what impact they want to have with the people who are now in their care or for the organization that's counting on them and that they're responsible to. Too many new leaders, as well as veteran leaders, as well as people that just figure they've got it all figured out, too many of them have the blinders on. They're intently focused on the tasks and objectives rather than on the bigger picture of why they're doing things and how things should be done well. As a result, we have managers on power trips, playing favorites, withholding key information. We've got leaders who push and push and chase short-term numbers at the expense of employees who are burning out. And we've got executives who are overly fixated on pleasing shareholders by chasing market share rather than building sustainable long-term growth. The kind of companies that Jim Collins talks about in his book, From Good to Great. We all need to heed the old carpenter's adage, measure twice, cut once. We should all be thinking more deeply and more clearly about what we're pursuing and how to create the greatest, most sustainable goods. So this leads us to our leadership tips, right? I told you we were going to talk about leader tips. And for you, our valued and appreciated audience, today I've got five tips to help you aim well and cultivate Good cognitive intelligence. Number one, contemplative reflection. This means turning your attention inward to examine what really matters to you and the people that you're responsible to. Ask yourself, what are your values? What is ultimately important to you and your organization? Are making money and profits priorities to you like they are to Martin Screlly? Or are values, integrity, and respect important to you like Dan Price? List and prioritize your top five values. And then if you want to turn good into great, then turn each one of your values into a credo statement that describes how you're going to act to exemplify each one of your values. So for example, if you value trust, a credo statement might sound something like this. I value trust by delivering my very best effort with full transparency and openness. Create those credo statements for each one of your top five values. The next tip I'm going to give you, later tip that I'll give you, is envisioning purpose. Consider why you do what you do. What do you intend to do and why is it important? Specifically, what difference do you intend to create from your actions? What good will come from your course of action? Number three of our leader tips. So after you've thought deeply about your purpose and you've thought about all the benefits that you're going to get, then think deeply about that impact. Consider the new how that new product is um, that you want to launch, ask yourself who will ultimately use it and will it, what will it really do for those people? Will it provide a lasting benefit or are you just satisfied with designing obsolescence? So anticipate the impact that the change initiative or decision or your own leadership is going to have on other people. Number four leader tip. So now that you've thought through what's important to you, your purpose, and the likely impact, now start imagining how you're going to bring this initiative to bear. Change can be very difficult on people. So if you have to push people out of their comfort zones to deploy a new software platform or something like that, then think ahead about how you can help your people adapt and how you can support the change that they're going to have to go through. Number five, set clear intentions. 
okay, so now you're guided by your values and your purpose. You've considered your impact and you've planned your actions. So this is good. You're almost there. The last step with cognitive intelligence is to set your intentions. Now is the time to resolve to stay true to your principles and your moral compass, to know what to say no to, and to stay the course without backing down, even when you're faced with the kinds of criticism and challenges that Dan Price was faced with, because you know it's the right thing to do. So there you have it. We've got our five leader tips to help you aim well with cognitive intelligence, contemplative reflection, envisioning purpose, anticipating impact, considering your actions, and setting clear intentions. I firmly and passionately believe that if all organizational and political leaders made a conscious effort to start with cognitive intelligence, our communities, our organizations, and even our world will be a much better place to live. Thank you, everyone, for your time and your engagement. If you want to explore ideas or anything that you've heard about on this podcast, by all means, reach out to me. Let's connect. You're welcome to book a consult with me anytime at calendar.com slash Terry. That's calendar.com slash Terry. That's all I've got for you today. Let's work to make the world better with inspired leadership and to make inspired leadership ubiquitous. Thanks again, everybody. Stay safe and we will talk to you again soon. Bye for now.